property and the zakat that which you are supposed to give from what Allah gave you. Allah speaks about the poor and Allah speaks about the needy and Allah says, Give them from the wealth of Allah that Allah gave you. Allah's made you a temporary custodian of the wealth that you have in your pocket. It's temporary. It's going to go. It's going to be depleted. You either waste it or you use it wisely. And when you're using it wisely, you either use it on yourself or you happen to expand and use on others. The winners are those who can reach out to others who are in greater need than them. Allah loves that quality so much. When you have and you know someone else does not have, to reach out to them may not be that difficult. But when you don't have so much and you see someone who has even less than you and then you can reach out, that is actually a quality that Allah praises in the Quran that was found among the Ansar of Medina Munawwara. Allah speaks about the Ansar and he says they give preference to others in things they themselves are in desperate need of. I need this so much, but that person needs it even more than me. So here I am giving it away. That's not an easy quality. Allah says, whoever, whoever is saved from the miserliness of their own nafs and themselves, they are the truly successful. They are the truly successful. So successful are those who give. Tonight we will have opportunity to give whatever you would like to give. Do you know why I'm encouraging you to give? Because every night we should be trying to engage in all these pillars of Islam. It's obviously not easy and it's not possible to engage in the last one. But on a voluntary level, some are fortunate that they were able or are able to do that. Those who are in Makkah right now, they can do a voluntary minor pilgrimage known as Umrah. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, whoever makes the Umrah in Ramadan, Allah will reward them equivalent to that of a Hajj. That's according to one narration. So we ask Allah Almighty to reward us. We ask Allah Almighty to grant us. Imagine all your pillars of Islam in one day and you're going to be engaging in them. Surely that's the night of power, the night of decree. May Allah soften our hearts. My brothers, sisters, it is time to quit sin. It is time to quit our bad ways. It is time to turn to Allah. Alam ya'ni lilladhina amanu an takhsha'a kulubuhum li dhikri Allah wa ma nazala min al-haqq Has the time not come? Has the time not come for those who believe to soften their hearts towards the remembrance of Allah and not away from it, my brothers and sisters? Has the time not come for those who believe to soften their hearts to humble their hearts towards Allah and the remembrance of Allah and whatever he has revealed in terms of the truth, the Quran. We need to soften our hearts towards Allah, not away from Allah. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Say that supplication often, O oh Allah, the turner of the hearts, turn my heart towards your deen, your religion, your faith and belief towards goodness, towards obedience. O oh Allah, the turner of the hearts, turn my heart towards you and not away from you. That's a powerful dua. Don't underestimate the value of supplication. My brothers, my sisters, every day we ask Allah to guide a straight path. <laughs> Every day we repeat that so many times. Guide us to the straight path because guidance is in the hands of Allah. We have an evening such as this, a night auspicious given by Allah, such as these nights of Ramadan. My brothers, they are not meant to go past just like that. My dear sisters, this is a night of resolutions for the sake of Allah. If you've been weak in something, strengthen yourself tonight. It's the night of power. If you've been weak in quitting something 
something you really want to quit and you know you have to quit. This is the night of power. This is the night of decree. You have to do something tonight. It cannot remain for years on end. You don't know whether you're going to see the next few days. Subhanallah. You don't know if you're going to see another Ramadan. And like I say, no one from amongst us has a total guarantee that tonight is definitely the night. But we're looking for it. We're searching for it. While we're searching for it, if that has moved you already, it's beneficial for you. It will, better, it will be better for you than your entire life. If hearts have been softened by Allah, they will be softened when we reach out to others. Today we are fasting, mashallah. We have not eaten for hours. We have not drunk anything for hours. Subhanallah. And we are seated here all together. There is almost pin drop silence when we were doing Salatul Asr earlier. And I'm sure there will be pin drop silence later as well. No one would ever imagine that there are thousands of people right here, right now in front of me. But that's Allah. He's given us a calmness in Ramadan. The condition of my heart is different from outside of Ramadan. Seize the opportunity. They say, make hay while the sun shines. Subhanallah. We ask Allah to grant us ease during these days of hardship. And we ask Allah to grant us softening during these days of auspiciousness that he has given us and the nights in particular. My brothers, my sisters, if everyone is rushing towards Allah, don't be the only few left out. Everyone is rushing towards Allah. I've just come in from Makkah to Al-Mukarramah and I can tell you when I see the thousands of people circumambulating the Kaaba in Tawaf and I look at them and from among them are the famous and those who are not known, the wealthy and those who are poor, the influential and those who have no influence, those who have few problems, those who have big problems, the healthy and those who don't have good health, those who've lost loved ones and those who haven't, those who are there for in order to cry for Allah to have mercy on them for something or another. And you have those who may not have had so many problems in their lives. Everyone is there to please Allah. And I feel like one small, minute, insignificant worshiper of Allah doing the same thing, running around the Kaaba like a little child, searching for goodness, searching for the help of Allah. And if, if I am not going to be there doing the same thing, it's me who has lost out. The same applies to us tonight. If you are not going to seek the forgiveness of Allah, if you're not going to change your life, it's you who's lost out. The others are all doing that anyway. Why should I lose out? For what? Everyone is trying to mend their ways. Everyone is seeking the forgiveness of Allah. Oh Allah, forgive us collectively tonight. Allahumma innaka afuun. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, may Allah Almighty have mercy on us. When we see others, we are very quick to judge people. We don't know their connection with Allah. Perhaps they cry at night to seeking the forgiveness of Allah. And we are busy pointing fingers at them, not realizing they are closer to Allah than we ever were. We have not yet tasted the sweetness of Iman. And here they are enjoying the fruits of faith, even though they may be in greater difficulty and hardship than yourself and myself. Sometimes Allah makes our lives easy. That is a test from Allah. Are you going to drift away from him or are you going to be more steadfast when Allah has given you a good job and a good family and good conditions and good situations? That is a test from Allah for you. Are you going to appreciate it or are you going to turn away from Allah? Is or are the gifts of Allah upon you drifting away, making you drift away from Allah? If that's the case tonight, we need to change that. A true gift is that which brings you closer to Allah. Otherwise, even when you get everything this world has to offer, it does not necessarily mean that Allah is pleased with you. Allah has given Fir'aun and Qarun and Allah has destroyed them. The Pharaoh had more than you can imagine. Qarun, Allah Almighty describes the keys to his treasures were so heavy that it would be difficult for a group of men to carry only the keys. Imagine what he must have had. What do you have? And you and I think we're a big deal. And Allah says, فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضَ Because he was ungrateful, Qarun, we caused the earth to open and swallow him and his entire household out, gone. Sudden, 
Look at what's happening across the globe in terms of disaster, natural disaster or man-made, whatever it might have been, something caused by man, warfare and so on. We ask Allah to grant us peace, stability, security, serenity, more than anything else, conviction and faith. My brothers, we have no guarantee that we're going to be sitting in goodness and we're going to be sitting in whatever we have been blessed by Allah. If we are going to turn away, Allah says, we can take that away from you at any moment. So therefore, I want to know what's the way of keeping what I have. How can I keep what I have and get more? Whatever I have in terms of worldly life, I have my family members, I have goodness, I have a decent job, I have a fair amount of money, for example, I have a fair amount of whatever other luxury, not luxuries, but goodness. Okay. And some go into the point of luxuries. Okay. How do I keep it? Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, Allah tells us in the Quran how to keep that. Allah says, It's like an announcement from Allah that if you are going to be thankful in the true sense, we will grant you increase. What is thankfulness in the true sense? Obey the instructions of Allah and stay away to the best of your abilities from that which is displeasing to Allah. Wherever you have faltered, turn to Allah very quickly, very quickly, because you and I are human beings. We can falter, we can fall. We may fall into sin like our forefather Adam fell into exactly what Allah told him not to do. He did. But the difference between him and those who are not interested in the relationship with Allah, he sought forgiveness instantly. And some don't bother seeking forgiveness. That's why Allah speaks about it in the Quran. He says, those who have wronged themselves, if they remember Allah immediately and seek forgiveness immediately and regret their deed and promise not to, uh, not to do that again. For example, Allah Almighty says, for them is paradise. Those are the ones whom we've prepared paradise for. Imagine. So when you sin, it doesn't mean you've lost paradise. You still have hope for as long as you're alive. And you are going to seek the forgiveness of Allah and change your ways. Allah says, those are the ones whom we will grant paradise 